This is this is the unemployed millennial setup right here. The comfortable setup. Yeah, you called me yesterday. Yeah. And you told me the vision that you had for unemployed millennial and I loved it. Should I repeat it? Yeah. I was telling Emery well, because there's so many podcasts nowadays and we're talking about like renting out studios and stuff like that because you have the ability to do that. I was like, you shouldn't even do that, you know, because your vibes and like the energy that you give off is like very comfy and like I don't want to have to worry about there being lights and cameras around all the time and like there's no better place to do it than in just like the most casual place like a like a couch or a bed I was I was saying because of the Rick Rubin like because I saw a Rick Rubin podcast where um, I think he was doing it with Lex Friedman and it was like two hours into the podcast mm. it was like it was only 15 minutes ago that I realized that there were no cameras and everything that even is... even now like if I even if it's a tensey bit I feel like I have to perform yeah I was doing a podcast with Nick yesterday and I was fully aware of the camera the whole time Especially if it's, like, a new person. Yeah. Or a person you, know? you haven't seen or, like, talked to in a little while. Yeah. Okay, that would be building my world for you. You are our first episode. This is our second episode together. This is Ryan Ang Films. Hello. hello. And our first episode, I genu- I think I get the most feedback from that, where people are, like, especially at really? Creator Camp, they're, like, they come up and they're, like, that episode was so good. And it was. Really? You articulated world building, like no other i feel like when people say these things like i don't believe it yeah but it's like they get into the specifics where i'm just like oh yes you know yeah. like the world building especially and like mm-hmm. the clothes and like you know the specific detail um so yeah brian is back on my unemployed millennial podcast hello i would actually like you to be a recurring guest yeah oh that was another thing that i was saying i was like because when i was when i first started like kind of thinking about your podcast just like you know every now and then yeah when like you pop up in my mind um i was like how is she gonna like travel from place to place and like interview new people all the time and like do what danny is doing our friend danny miranda and i was like and then i realized like you don't have to do that you could just talk about this like different topics with the same people and like in the comfort of your room or your bed or a couch and like i was even saying like hide the cameras like so the guests don't even know and that's crazy because first of all that's been my learnings of just like even podcasting with people that i know Mm -hmm. that are kind of like in the inner just like on the outskirts of the circle yeah it's not as comfortable for me because i think i just like having conversations with people that i just think are interesting or already know Mm -hmm. so i don't want to like constantly be having to like connect with like a new person you know what your art is gonna be i feel like you know what your art is gonna be is gonna be like figuring out how to like in the middle of a really awesome conversation with like this new person figure out how to craft that or how to like you know just like set up a camera and just like start talking mm. and continue that conversation i don't know, you know yeah what sometimes I'm about? we're having really amazing conversations and ethically i'm just like i would love to record this but i'm not going yeah. to but then you gave me permission to record whatever mm-hmm. <laughs> so i have random recordings of our conversations That's that are good. actually like really good for a podcast episode i'm gonna go back and like listen to them all and then bring yeah. up different points yeah and then you could probably like cut cut into them yeah Okay, so you're at a very big transition point. Yeah. Um, a lot of the themes of my podcast topics, because you even said, like, a lot of the world building that you did for me was crazy to artic- to have it articulated to me because those are, like, the signs that I'm getting. Like, even Jade, I met Jade for the first time, Unjaded mm-hmm. Jade, and she was, like, talking about, like, oh, like, how about if you didn't have cameras? Like, if you just were, like, yeah, talking that's what I'm saying. with audio and you said the exact same thing, which I almost started this podcast with, like, only audio because I yeah. do think it is... Like, you're just being perceived. Like, it just changes the dynamic. But we're both, like, YouTubers, and we still feel that way, you know? Mm-hmm. So we have been talking a lot about feminine energy. Mm-hmm. And did did we all talk about it for the first time when we went to your house? Like, me, you, and Chris? Was that the first I time? I think that was when it was, like, very... Or, like, that we kind of saw that we related in that sense. Yeah. You know? 
because every single time I talk to you on the phone. Yeah, it was, it was. Yeah. yeah because we were talking to Chris. Yeah. And then Chris was like, I feel like I have masculine energy. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then I was like, I was like, I feel like I have feminine energy. And you're like, yeah, I see that. I'm like, that's why we get along so well, I think. Yeah, yeah. But I think, first of all, I admire the self-awareness. And also, I think there's such a taboo of, like, femininity, masculinity. And, like, if you're a man, you want to be masculine. And if you're, like, a woman, you want to be feminine. Where, in reality, like, everyone has both. And I feel like you just, like, own that you have, like, feminine energy and you relate to it. Yeah. I've, but it took me so long to get there. Mm -hmm. And I feel like sometimes I'm... I almost, like, admire... I, feel, I found myself admiring a lot of, like, um, like f females that, like, embrace it so well. And I'm like, I'm not there yet. Oh, like feminine you know? energy? Yeah. I'm like, mm. I'm not there yet. I, I need to, like, learn. Even, like, okay. You, when you told me about Jade, I was like, okay, who is this person? And I started looking at Jade. And, and I'm like, I'm not there yet. But, like, that, she was able to build a world around that energy. Hmm. Do you think she embodies feminine energy? As I well? don't know. I don't know. But like, at least that's the, the the vibes that I get. Like what? We're talking about Unjaded Jade. I just met her for the first time. And and I, I keep them. I only watch like yeah. one reel and like, and like scroll through her YouTube channel. Well, I think you have a really unique talent to look at someone and then see the world that they're trying to build. Like, do you have that yeah. vision for her? Or, like, what did you see? I mean, kind of. But Let's get a peek into like, your brain. Also, like, I don't want it to <laughs> yeah, be, like, I have, wrong. like, superpowers. Yeah. And, like, I can, you know what I mean? Like. I think it's just a very strong intuition, maybe. Yeah. But it is honestly impressive because I can't really, I don't want to talk. Oh, you should meet him, by the way, too. Okay. But I don't usually want to talk to people or, like, I don't usually feel like I need to talk to people about, like, my channel. Because I'm just like, mm. you don't get it. But you do. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I, I thought, I realized that it was kind of like dangerous to, I mean, I, I appreciate that people like see that in me of mm -hmm. like, I can see other people's at world where I could see through the, you know, like judging the book by its cover and I could see through it. But obviously like, I, I don't think any human can yeah. like see someone real and YouTube videos and yeah. go like I know who you're gonna be yeah you know yeah I feel like I have to get to know her but I, I was saying like when I did scroll through like I I don't I don't know I I was just it was like I respect those people because I want to have that confidence mm -hmm. but like I want to try to like share that energy with the world but for so long or so much of my life I was like kind of suppressing it or like or like because I, I was like I need to be a man you know mm. and I see how my dad would act and then I would see how people in media perceive like tell you what a man sh should be and I was like that's I shouldn't I shouldn't want to be like that or like I shouldn't want to have feminine energy you know and even like when I first got into my first relationship we like did this little test where like who wears the pants in the relationship <laughs> and then I was like obviously I wear the pants in the relationship I'm the fucking man you know and then like we did the test and then you know my ex she was like so like you know she's so strong and obviously like in retrospect like she obviously wore the mm -hmm. pants in the relationship and she's like i think i wear the pants in the relationship i was like no no you no, know no, no, but like no. in the most like insecure mm. like man way wow and i don't i think it wasn't until the past maybe year year and a half that i really started to fully embrace it but i and now i feel insecure that I still have that masculine energy left within me wow. and that I'm like accidentally spewing it sometimes or like the toxic masculinity like I'm accidentally spewing that you know I'm really scared I think that's what I'm scared of now whereas like many many years ago 
or for the majority of my life, I was scared of not, uh, or I'm, I was scared of showing the feminine side or the softer side of me. Now I'm just like scared that that toxic insecurity is still within me and I like need to get rid of it still, you know? I don't know if I'm making any no, sense. No, I think that makes complete sense. Okay, I want to go off a few points here. Like, yeah. maybe first we can think about, like, what about the feminine energy or, like, just learning about it or what traits did you most relate to? And then I think you saying, like, that's what you're scared of is, like, spewing the toxic masculinity because I think you see it that in a lot of people, too, or, like, maybe a lot of yeah. men. <laughs> yeah. And so you're, yeah. like, constantly, like, oh, like, this is a result of, like, that so you see it so often mm -hmm. and I know you do. So then you're just like, oh, I don't want to be that way. Yeah. So what are you saying? Like, I think that's why you're scared of it. But because you just like recognize it now or like there's like a consciousness, yeah. like an awareness. But OK, so going back. I was going to say, yeah. like, I'm scared of that. And like, I admire the other thing, which which is like I admire the other thing, which is like we were just listening to the Beyonce song or like, I don't know. Which song? Uh, um, Be Alive. Or like, I'm going to, I'm just going to use Jade as an example. Yeah, go for okay? it. I, but I don't even know. I'm making this assumption. Yeah. So I literally I just told to him know. he should meet Jade. So that's like yeah. the basis of their relationship. And I, I met her for the first time. I want people to know that I'm just making an assumption yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I like try not to be that. Ma toxic masculinity but and I, I admire that the that strength and like I want to be that but I feel like I'm not I'm not there so how so I don't know <laughs> like you mean for but what do you mean how so like that I feel like I'm not there yeah in terms of masculinity or fe like Femininity, expressing expressing the energy or like embracing it so well you mm. know in the way you dress and in the way you carry your life and even in the way that you maybe post stuff on instagram so hmm. i don't know <laughs> okay and then what traits of learning about feminine energy did you like most relate to and like was eye-opening for you because i feel like this was like low-key kind of eye-opening for you like it's like in a yeah. lot of conversations that we talk about and i think you're carrying it to like a lot of your different like circles or works that you're yeah. doing you don't have to be the dominant one, you don't have to be the guy that makes all the decisions or the guy that, you know, has to take the lead all the time or, you know, the manly macho dude to be to be powerful, mm. you know, um, it, but it's a different type of strength. It's like knowing yourself. It's like being independent, setting boundaries and like allowing people maybe allowing other people to make decisions and stuff like that, but like making sure that it doesn't, you know, um, fuck with what you want to do and with your values. Like Waymond from Everything Everywhere is an amazing example of that, where his wife, Evelyn, is such a strong individual and is so like headstrong on what she wants. And Waymond is totally cool with letting her wear the pants in the relationship. But once it starts to screw with his values, like he's the one that makes the decision to get the divorce because he's mm -hmm. not getting what he wants out of the relationship. So he's and he's the one setting the boundaries, but he's also the one being kind and being optimistic about the world and trying to get Evelyn to see that too. But also like being on the sideline when she's the one that goes and saves the day, you know? And I, I, I don't know. I saw that as very appealing because I tried to be the other and I just wasn't, and I just couldn't, you know? I think it's kind of empowering even like for me to see you to have that perspective. Cause I think yeah. even in a lot of YouTube, like I just did a podcast with Megan Klein who talked about like, masculine operating in masculine energy is very like data driven it's like telling people what to do versus like mm -hmm, yeah. i think for the youtube space it's like following your intuition on oh i think this trend will eventually do well versus just like taking whatever is trendy right now and then like molding yourself to fit around that 
So I feel like I try to just do like a lot of intuitive stuff. So it's cool to see you kind of take the same way of operation. Cause I think that's also extremely powerful, but it's just like yeah. kind of a silent power. Yeah. Yeah. It's a silent power. You, you could be the strongest person in the room, you know, but that doesn't mean that, that doesn't mean that you have to make all the decisions or that doesn't mean that it needs to be shown, you know? And I think, at least from like an outsider perspective for like a lot of the work that you do, like in the circles of influence that you have, like creator camp, it's like yeah. a lot of what you're doing is like you're setting the boundaries for like other people and like mm -hmm. you're like trying to make sure that it's like good for the group and the community. Yeah. I find that a lot of my roles, at least in the business that we run and and I'm very grateful because they all listen and yeah. they all, you know, respect my decisions and or like my opinions. But a lot of what my role has been is like to get the other guys to understand what it's like to be in someone's shoes like like me who maybe doesn't have the the voice yet, you know. Mm. Um but, you know, Especially like when you're running a business and everything's so exciting and fun and, and like fast. fast, you tend to like, you're like a bull, like running straight towards your target, but you can like knock down people along the way and with no like ill intention, like you're just doing it because it's fun and it's exciting and you want to help people, but you don't realize that you're knocking other people over while you're reaching that goal and to like kind of get them to understand that and be aware of it and be cautious of it um that's kind of like a role of like uh i don't know like a my type of personality i think that's where i fit really well in hey, business at least you know you make like really beautiful analogies one time i was talking to chris and he was like because he's very sensitive and like i'm a sensitive oh. person you know what I'm talking about? I think I know. With the prism? Prism? No. Okay, what okay. what what did what did that spark in your brain? <laughs> Cause I relate to Chris. Chris is the CEO of Creator Camp, which is the events company that we run. Um, and Chris is like the softest, most uh, he's the most kind person and all he wants to do is kind of like help. Uh, I think he has like a very kind soul. I think so too. You know? Um and that's amazing for, I think, running a type of business that we're running, which deals with people all the time and which like literally creates spaces for people. It's amazing for that. But sometimes with like relationships and with like love life or like things like that, it like hurts a lot more. You know, with like an artist, it just like hurts deep inside. Whereas like maybe a more business minded, data driven person is like, there are more women in the world. Like, it's okay. I can move on. And maybe they're very prescriptive, you know, but for, for someone like Chris and myself, uh, Chris just, I don't even know if I should say that, but, but Chris was going through some complications with a relationship that he had and he was just feeling very down. And I know exactly what that feels like, like the pain in your heart and feeling like you yeah. can't get out of bed or yeah. feeling like that's the only thing you could think about and knowing that you have work to do, but you can't hmm. do the work because it just hurts so bad. Yeah. I don't know what analogy he was telling you about, but the analogy that I was telling him was like, is like that emotion that you feel is actually like, is because he was beating himself over. He's like, why do I have to feel this way? Like, I don't like this. I was like, this is it's like actually a superpower that you have to feel that way. And to be able to feel emotions so heavily, it's a curse, but it's also like the strongest. It's like you're the strongest Marvel superhero, but your power is so strong that you could destroy yourself with it. So... You need to learn how to control that because you're one of the most powerful people in the world because you can feel these emotions. But if you don't have control over that, if you don't set boundaries with yourself, mm. you're going to destroy yourself and everything around you. 
But if you can control it and put that energy, maybe not towards a toxic relationship, but towards like a... Like a community. Towards a community or towards a mission or towards art uh, or business, like you can, you're the one that's going to change the world, you know? But that, that was the analogy that I was thinking about when... That's really beautiful, though. That reminds me. So I started watching Avatar because when I bought that camera, the day... I want to talk about Avatar. Okay, so do I. But that reminds me... Okay, so I bought that camera because I was talking to the guy at B&H, and he was like, oh, you're from Alaska? The Water Tribe is based on the Inuits in Alaska. We're talking about Avatar The Last Airbender, okay, not yeah. the blue people. Yes, The Last Airbender. And I watched an episode that was like... I haven't, I've only watched like, I was watching it when I was last year, so I haven't caught up. But one of the last episodes I watched was like about the lightning episode with like Zuko. Redirecting lightning. Yeah. And it's exactly Mm. described like how you just described like the most powerful thing where he's like, if you can't channel the lightning, because apparently, yeah, yeah. (laughs) because it's such a powerful bending. It's like uh, the most powerful in the fire bending, whatever. Yeah. But you can't, you basically can't control the lightning you're just guiding it and also he was like if you can't control yourself you'll destroy everything around you because like it's so powerful that it'll just like catch everything on fire that's that's a beautiful like how could the writers of like a kid's show come up with such a beautiful analogy for for that i don't know that's just so okay i do want to talk about avatar but maybe i want to go back one bit because Maybe this can close out the the feminine energy, but... um, Yeah. It'll be a theme throughout. Yeah, Yeah. okay. And I feel like you, again, more so than, like... I really admire how you just... You're so self-aware of it, and you Mm -hmm. really, like, process it in your brain, and you've been implementing boundaries. Yeah. Can you speak a little bit of how you're doing that or how that process has been? That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. For example, like, I mean, the easiest way to explain it would be like, it's just like saying no, or just like, like, for example, like, I I, I think that I'm, I'm very much like a people pleaser, or like, I think a couple of years ago, I was very easily convinced to do things, or like, mm-hmm. I would be scared to speak out on things, because like, I was scared that I would hurt someone's feelings and stuff like that. Um, and then that just automatically put me on a on a level below Mm -hmm. whoever I was talking to because I'll just say yes 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 yeah and then I'm 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 no longer respecting myself yeah you know because anytime you put someone on a pedestal they're looking down on you exactly exactly um and you're giving them permission yeah to do that too you know and the more you say yes to things that you don't want to do and the more you don't are not just honest the more it might build build up right and there might be resentment that builds up Mm -hmm. uh i can give this as an example because i'm running like two businesses at once i actually ran three businesses at once uh at one point and i know that my heart is in making videos is in like is in making art and films And I think that I didn't fully, I don't know if it's like, I didn't fully believe in my ability to make films and there were other opportunities coming along that just kind of like took me away from me expressing myself because Mm -hmm. we now had creator camp and we now had an agency that we were going to run and that those were making money. And I was like, man, I should put my focus there. All my friends were building this together. Isn't this the dream that we like wanted all along was to build together and live together and do all this stuff together. And as I spent like the last nine months working on creator camp and building our second event and all of these things, I found myself uploading a video every four months, which is like, and I started feeling suffocated. Like, mm. I actually think I was expressing to Eli at the time, a couple, like, I think this was like a couple months before Creator Camp 2 happened. Um, and I was like, I'm not feeling good. And he was like, I feel like your voice isn't being heard because 
you're you're a filmmaker and you don't have the ability to make films right now mm. because you're traveling for business and you're like doing all of these things for the business but nothing for yourself and i think that really kind of hit me because i was like man like that's exactly how i feel i feel like i'm being silenced and i actually feel like all of this narrative of all of my friends going like we should live together and we should focus on building the business and like not our youtube channels it like fucked with my mind because like that's where i wanted to be i didn't necessarily and then over time i was like man i should really set my boundaries with the businesses because filmmaking always comes first that's what got mm -hmm. me to where i am today that's what i'm literally making a living from from my videos um why Shout why out to I, am I yeah <laughs> A nonprofit, by the way, my, my YouTube videos make zero money, but I've been very blessed to have a nonprofit, a creator nonprofit, like believe in me enough to give me the opportunity to make a living from YouTube. And they really believe in me. It's just a testament of how much people believe in you. Yeah, it's and we can talk about that and the synchronicities there. Um, but once I started making that shift and setting the boundaries of the business, I called Chris, I called Max, I called Simon. I was like, guys, I feel like I don't want to build resentment and I don't want to be angry at you guys. And in, or, in order to do that, I, I need to focus on what I, what I think I love the most, you know? And, and I, I had to like say, speak, you know, say the uncomfortable things of like, I don't even know if I necessarily want to live together like i i kind of want my own space because i need my own space to create and i'm very lucky that they're all very like understanding of that and it's just it's just saying no it's like people aren't going to be mad yeah. you know uh, actually what is worse is is not setting those boundaries and letting the resentment build up to the point where the relationship just shatters and there's no honesty because you, you kept everything inside. And once you, I think, once you realize that there's a problem, like, it's on, and, and it sucks because you're the person that was being pushed around and mm -hmm. you could feel bad about yourself. And you should, like, you should give yourself some grace because, like, yeah, you were the one working your ass off and being kind of pushed around. And not appreciated. But, yeah, not appreciated. And that really fucking sucks. But now that you see that problem, now it's all on you to mm. to figure it out and to, to push through it. No one else is going to figure it out for you. And it sucks. Like, that's because you just want to feel sorry for yourself. And, like, <laughs> and, and like it, does fuck, it does fucking suck, you know, because you, you feel like you should get an apology or you feel like you should... Um, you know, others should help you out now. Mm. Um, I don't know if I'm explaining this. No, right, that, that actually makes a lot of sense. But but that's not coming. You know, that shit's not coming. Mm. You have to figure it out yourself and make your life better. It once you realize it's everyone else pushing you around and it, it's everyone else's fault. N now it's your fault and Dang. it's on you to figure it out. I actually feel like that's extremely valuable to hear. Yeah. You know, because you can just feel sorry for yourself, but where does that get you? And then also, if you just take extreme, yeah. like, ownership of the situation, then it is up to you to, like, place those boundaries and... Yeah, and and I think a lot of it is, like, a... And I, 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 I'm I also blessed because I have a awesome mom. Yeah. You know, that... I'm, and I'll, I'll be, like, moping around, like, my mom will be like, get up. <laughs> She'll be like, get up. You're a... She's like, you're a filmmaker, Ryan. She's like, you're... You, what are you going to do here? Look at you. <laughs> she's like, Your mom's amazing. She's like, look at you, Ryan. <laughs> you're sitting here. You could be making your videos. But you you could be going to sleep right now or exercising. <laughs> but you're sitting here. That's so cute. <laughs> and, then, and, then like, and then I'll be like, oh, so I'll be like, oh, fuck you. Like, I don't want to say you're right. So I'll just go upstairs and like do my work, you know? I think you have a really beautiful relationship with your mom. My mom is awesome. Yeah, my mom is awesome. And I, 
I don't know why, but recently I've been thinking a lot more about award shows Aww. and like, because I'm working on a film right now about everything everywhere or like the history of Asian Americans in Hollywood and like the ending is like it's key insane. Well, I winning seen the an Oscar and he's like, mom, I won an Oscar. Aww. And then I was like, how would I shout out my mom when like I get I get that award. Even like I just got accepted into Buffer Fest too, which is like a YouTube film festival. And I was like, what if I win an award there? It's like, I don't not good at like speeches or anything or like public speaking, but you are very articulate. I think you would be really good you. at that. I th think I just need to practice speaking in front yeah. of the crowd. But I was like, if I was there, I was like, you know, I could only think one person. It has to be my mom. Wow. But yeah. She's, she's, I'm going to hang out and go shopping with her today when, when you go to Gov Ball. <laughs> um, but yeah, she's, and she is starting to see the world too. And like, I just showed her my latest film and this is after setting my boundaries and um, spending a lot of time understanding where I want to put my focus and then intentionally putting my focus into my films and I showed you, like, the first two minutes of my film. It was incredible. I showed it. Thank you. Next level. Thank you. I showed it to my mom. My mom, and I have a, I, ha, I might have a brand deal on this one. My mom was like, they're only paying that much for this? She's like, next time, no, no, no more, no more. She's like, you're either doing your Patreon or you're not putting anything on there. This, this, she's like, this can't be ruined. And before, you know, she's like, she's an Asian parent, immigrated here when she was 18 years old with like 18 17 dollars in her pocket and and she's telling me to not take thousands of dollars yeah because she's like your potential is just so much higher that's the other thing with setting boundaries is under is that you get, get to understand your potential too mm. and the ultimate risk is not in like for me I could have played it safe and focused on the businesses and I would have been fine. I, m I might even be wealthier than the path that I want to go down now. But that's not where I reach my full potential, you know? And I see it in filmmaking. I, I don't know if I'm, I, I don't want to bring down my entrepreneurial, my, I, cause I still think I could run yeah. a business, but, but uh, the filmmaking is where, where it's at and that's where your heart is. That's where my heart is, yeah. And I think setting your boundaries and all this stuff, you just start to understand your potential. And, and your own too. value. Yeah, yeah. I think there is really something to removing your presence, too. If that's, like, the worst case scenario, you lay your boundaries and then people, like, don't accept them, then you also just have to be fine, like, completely going alone or doing your own thing. But then people value your time exactly, more. Exactly, yeah. People value your time more. People value... Uh, for me, it's like, if even if I say no to this integration, like... People will value a spot on my YouTube channel more, you know? Um, yeah, it's just like learning to say no is just, it's so tough in the beginning, but it changes everything, you know? It changes, changes everything. Um, can we talk about how you are getting signs and synchronicities from the universe even in the sponsorship or just like saying no is like telling the universe like what you want or even like how you want to operate with like flexibility or just like prioritizing the art yeah was there you were getting signs oh, man yeah i can't even i actually think my whole youtube vid, my next youtube video is like this synchronicity because i'll just spoil everything here okay <laughs> um off the top of my head, I can't remember, like, all of it, but, like, I'll just talk about the big picture. I have some of them written, I think, from one yeah. of our conversations. You said we both read the Rick Rubin book. That, that whole book, the creative act, is, like, a whole synchronicity yeah, in me itself. Too. You know? When I brought it to New York, I, like... She asked me, I was two pounds overweight, so I had to take a book out, and I took that book out, and then yeah. I read, like, the first 96 pages on my flight, and I was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. It was, that was a whole synchronicity in itself. I mean, talk about the whole setting boundaries thing. And like, I think also another theme in my life lately has been understanding your full potential mm. because not even to be egotistical for a second, but I'm like seeing my development as an artist 
and seeing what is being built with the YouTube new wave and what is being built as is my growing as as an artist and I'm like there might okay this might be fucking crazy this might be crazy but there might be a day where I could win an Oscar like not that that even matters not that that's even the goal of being a filmmaker because it's not but I was like there might be a day where I get to be in that room in LA like with all of my idols mm -hmm. with the Daniels and sitting there and potentially winning an Oscar or being nominated for an Oscar. I fully believe in that for you too. Thank you. <laughs> it's like there can there can be a, a chance that that can happen. And it's been a talk conversation in my mind constantly of like I could be an artist. I could, I could be an artist. But again, the businesses were thriving and we were getting money here and there and I was like but I don't know if I'll, I don't know that that Oscar thing that that being an artist that's so that's so crazy that's so like and I think the more I dove deep into YouTube and art I was, the more I was like that's so crazy because that only happens to like fucking like two dozen people you know I was like that's not me that's not me and, but like the more I thought about it the more I'm like that could be me though that could be me and I think the Rick Rubin book hmm. and watching uh, everything everywhere all at once win all those Oscars and seeing people that looked like me achieve that and all at the same time I wanted to make a film about Asian Americans in Hollywood that was a whole synchronicity in itself and just to dive deeper into it um, for for the creative act um, Rick Rubin at the very end of the book I'm going to spoil this but at the very end of the book he was like, the art should always come first. And it might seem like the most like simple thing and maybe to someone else it might not mean anything. But for, for me, I was like, that makes so much mm -hmm. sense. I, I, I get what you're saying. I get it. Like, and what he was saying was the career, the money, and the art are two completely separate things. Like they're just two completely separate things. You can't pair that together and you can never compromise your love for art and what you're making for money, money, like never, never. That's how important it is to express yourself purely. And if that means you need to get a job to support your, your filmmaking or your painting, that's what you got to do. But money and art are two completely separate things. And if you can make money from your art, then sick. Like, you're living the fucking life. And I took a step back and I looked at my life right now and I'm working on this movie and everything. And I'm like, hold on, why am I compromising my art to try and make money from this integration? Like, why am I focusing on the businesses so much? Because I'm, I can literally make a living doing my art and and just focusing on making the best shit possible right now why am i focused on all this other shit or why am i worried about all this other shit and i think right after that i was like okay it's time to like see if this theory of becoming a full-time filmmaker is is possible have you had um, moments where like your the money has compromised your art Um, no. Interesting enough. Like, no. Because we're in such a lucky period of time right now where... What do you mean in terms of money? Oh, are you saying because a lack of money or like... Or like you're prioritizing the money over the Oh, art? for sure. My last video. Uh, I rushed it because I didn't want it to get a story blocks integration out. And it was pretty good. But I was bummed with the ending because I could have spent more time on the ending. And my manager was like, you should be uploading this. You should be uploading this. I was like, okay, okay, okay. And then it was compromised. And I can't watch that video because I don't mm, like it. Because of the... Because of the ending. Yeah. Because I, I didn't 
put enough effort. And 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 then people are telling me like, no one's gonna realize. No one's gonna realize. I'm like, I realize yeah. it. Like, and I knew it could have been better. Yeah. Like I knew for a fact that this could have been better, and I didn't make it better. It is interesting because like there are definitely two sides that you could take. It's like sometimes like sponsorships allows me to like create a video that I wouldn't have done before. So then it kind of like lays a framework for yeah. just like a different type of video. For sure. And then I'm grateful for it. It but, has to be the right sponsor. Yeah. Yeah. But then, yeah, also like sometimes it kind of just like, if you have like a really cool idea and then you just like put a sponsor in the middle of it and it's like something that you see is like really representative of like your brain and crafting like this message that you wanted to get across. And then there's just like this ad in the middle of it. That's going to be there and a part of that story forever. It's just kind of like, hmm. Yeah. It's like, there's a credit card ad in the middle of this thing. <laughs> like what? Like, and, but the thing is like, that's how I feel. I also understand like, I was talking to Nathaniel Drew the other day, uh, like a couple weeks ago, and he was like, I realized that it was like, that's what you, sometimes that's what you just yeah, need to do. Yeah, exactly. and, and like, it also is like, that's that. I just want to preface by saying, like, I'm on one side of the extreme. I have the privilege of having this nonprofit. Yeah. I am my independent media initiative. They're fucking awesome. Um, I have the blessing of them, yeah. you know. Like they're um, giving you that ability to focus on the art so over I, I don't money. have to. They want me to yeah. do that and nothing else. And I like if that's not the universe telling me to, if that's not the universe telling me to to go down this path, I don't I don't know what is you know. Yeah. So, for me, personally, I'm taking that route of pure artist, trying it you know, only working with the sponsors that care about me and like understand my craft and that match my brand and things that I'm actually using. And then like, other than that, like I'm not, I'm not gonna try to sell my soul because my, my art is too important. Um, and it might be an egotistical thing, it's a very self-centered thing, but I don't know, that's, that's all of YouTube too, you know? That's true so Tyler the creator rap caviar what did you learn oh, from that oh yes um by the way I'm gonna I wanna I wanna talk about an analogy that I used that helped me understand what art is so well so fucking well I, f I need to say this um and I'm probably gonna make a video on it um but yeah uh, I was just like working on my video uh making dinner and I was like like to listen to podcasts or like listen to music but i was like maybe i should do something different this time and i remembered that we had wanted as a group of friends we had wanted to watch this uh documentary about tyler the creator on this show on hulu called rap caviar and i love tyler so i was just totally down to listen to whatever it was and this oh yeah and this goes back to the whole boundary setting thing mm. um he had done the exact he had gone through the exact same things that I was go I'm going through right now when he was making um Flower Boy which is the album that got him to this artistic superstardom that he is at right now and the whole documentary is about his journey from being this people seeing him as this like immature silly rapper who was more of a spectacle comedy guy than an actual good producer and rapper and long story short like he was talking about how during his um earlier albums he was also doing tv shows and stuff like that like and MTV he was doing or something. yeah he was doing other things that was making him money and that was building his brand and people would go up to him on the streets it's like i loved you on that show you're so funny you're so funny it's like damn nobody nobody sees me for my art for my art nobody sees me for the thing i care about the most and he was like never again never that's never going to happen again and he's talking to pharrell and pharrell was like make something undeniable understand your art and why you're making every step 
don't just do it for the flash flashy shit you can make it as flashy as the flashy shit but like make it undeniable make it meaningful and you will be you'll be cemented in you will get the respect that you want and he's like okay no more he dropped all of the comedy stuff i said he was like i'm not gonna be funny for like two years and then for two years he just locked himself in his room airbnb to airbnb understanding music composition understanding the art of music Mm -hmm. surrounding himself around other artists that were successful listening to things that he never ever listened to and that's when flower boy came out and then igor and then call me if you get lost which just like back to back to back legendary albums all got nominated for grammy two won grammys now he's like cemented he he has the respect that he deserved and it's like he saw the potential he knew that he could be a grammy award-winning artist but he never gave himself the permission to, to like do fully it, go in to it fully go into it um but luckily enough he had the right people around him and he had seen that maybe he didn't set the boundaries right or maybe he didn't he wasn't focusing on the thing that he cared about the most and it was crazy because i was listening to this documentary of one of my favorite artists at a time where i was going through the exact same things and i was making the exact same realizations you know um so I was freaking out when I was listening to that. <laughs> yeah, you were like, like this is synchronicity. Yeah, yeah. And I called you and I was like, you got to listen to this. You yeah. got to watch this. Because I'm at the same place kind of too where I'm just like, oh, I want to explore new things like with my podcast. But it's yeah. like what I get, like I can get sponsorships and whatever on my YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. And a lot of my signs have been like you going through the exact same thing. Yeah. Like yeah, you yeah. setting your boundaries, like other people like wanting to focus like even kelly stamp she's like she has a second channel now because she feels like she can speak her full like she yeah, i was looking for that i couldn't find it's it. like water what water burger what a burger <laughs> i don't know okay, what it's called Whataburger. queen okay. or something because she's like found she wants to talk about like her religion yeah, yeah. and she doesn't want to do that on a platform that she started talking about how to grow on youtube mm-hmm. so it's like a lot of these signs to me are just like even if it's not the most successful thing or like the thing that's making the most money, it's like you just have to kind of a lot of people around me are like leaping and trusting that the net will appear. Yeah. By the way, on the, on the topic of maybe religion, like I used to be such a nihilist mm. and not that I'm, I'm religious now, but I'm much more open to the idea of it. Yeah. And I'm much more open to the idea of the universe just working with you for you. And you just need to trust it. Even if things aren't working out for you right now, it's like something out there is just, it's just testing you to make sure that you are, you're up for the job, you know? And that's where I'm much more open to it now than I was two years ago when I started YouTube. When I started YouTube, I was so, I was like, man, nothing matters. Like, Mm. I was like, this sucks. You know, life sucks. Let's talk about that because I feel like you've also made a transition and you described yourself as cynical. Mm -hmm. And then recently you were telling me that you were watching the movie Taxi Driver. Oh, yeah. What did that teach you? By the way, all this media that I'm consuming right now, I'm so in love with the media that I'm consuming. I've been loving hearing about it. Like you will tell me what you've learned. And I was like, I'm just like, wow. (laughs) I'm I'm making a cautious or conscious effort to even just every day surf through my YouTube videos and literally don't recommend this YouTube channel to Mm, me. That's so important actually. To give YouTube the directions of what I want to watch. This is what I want. And right now I got my guilty pleasure of like Avatar, The Last Airbender. Wait, yeah, we only... I also play Overwatch. So I like watching Overwatch videos. I got those, but I also have Rick Rubin podcasts pop up. I have Tyler, the creator, music, you know, from their fan, like the whole fan base makes like Tyler, the creator style music. So you're even building your world in the, in the world that you're watching. Yeah, you have to, I feel. Yeah. And then also because so much of my research for my videos is, um, 
surfing on YouTube. Yeah. So I'm getting a lot of documentaries and stuff like that. So, and movies and like analysis videos. And I fucking love it. I fucking love it. So on that note of like the media that I'm consuming right now, all of it, I'm being trying to be much more intentional about yeah. it. You know, because if you're not, YouTube will literally own you. Like, they will own you. You, you will just be on an infinite, like, death scroll, yes. you know? Uh, and I've, I've been in those situations, you know? I think a lot of, like, even countering that, because I call that, like, TikTok brain, even though it's, like, YouTube. Yeah. It's, like, you can become an AI person and just following and doing everything for the algorithm that is provided for you instead yeah. of being conscious. I think a, an active solution is literally to, like, build out your own world. I, again, it's, like, you see the problem. Yeah. Okay, you see the problem with YouTube? Like, what are you going to keep doing? You're just going to be sad over it are you gonna like just like keep criticizing youtube which is if you look back at my youtube videos you will see that i was in this in this like moping period of yeah. like criticizing youtube which yeah there are a lot of problems with youtube maybe it's good to acknowledge it but after a certain point it's like yo you need to it's like the ownership thing about it yeah you need to do i remember getting very scared because uh and this will tie back to the taxi driver thing. Yeah. Um, because I'm, I got really scared because I clicked on my YouTube channel and it was all, it was, it was so fucking scary because I had gone on a binge of watching news. Mm. It's like, and it was all, it wasn't even like good news about pol like about like current events and stuff yeah. like that. It was literally news of like murders. Yeah. Of like, of like people, you know, killing themselves, of like beatings and stuff like that. And it was, it wasn't even current news. It was like stuff that happened 10, 15 years ago. It's like YouTube recommended wow. this, this like, it was just so bad for you. Wow. It was so bad for you. And I saw myself getting deeper and deeper. I was like, like and then every time I saw it, it was like immediate reaction was don't recommend this. Don't recommend this. Don't recommend this. So you, that's actually I'm a really good to advice to actively like do that yeah. because that's been my Twitter recently. Like I usually love Twitter, but in the last like two months, it should become this like just the stuff I'm reading. It was actively putting I was telling you this. It was like yeah. kind of putting me into a depressive, like shamed mood. And so I was just like, man, I need to get off of this. It should be it should be a flex, honestly. Yeah, it should be a flex. To, for people to show off their Instagram feeds yeah. and for it to be useful mm. shit. And you not know? just like bikini pictures or like, yeah. 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 I was very, very thankful too because my, my Instagram feed is either my friends. Yeah. Or. Mine's all like spirituality stuff. Yeah, I like spirituality mine. stuff. <laughs> we'll, we'll like share it. We'll share things. Yeah. Like, like my, my uh, saved stuff are all like I have like Neil deGrasse Tyson talking about mm -hmm. how, you know, um, and then I have uh, Virgil Abloh. I have, you know, sculptures that I liked, art that I enjoyed, poetry. Yeah. Um, and it's like, yeah, like, I mean, like the Internet's not going anywhere. Yeah. The Internet's only going to consume more of your life. This is only going to become more important. Yeah. So like you, you better better figure it out you know um but on the on the note of taxi driver yeah. this will tie all the, all back to it i was watching one of the most famous uh art house movies to have ever been made by martin scores a uh, movie called taxi driver by martin scorsese and for those of you like people who don't know what it is it's a it's a film about a taxi driver who in chooses New in New York City, who chooses to drive um, in at night in midnight and drive people around at midnight, um, and he's like a Vietnam War veteran, mm. and he has like PTSD. It's not it's not it's not shown, but it's implied mm. through the way that he acts that he has a lot of mental health issues and he's lonely and. I don't live in New York City, but I can see it with certain people, and I could see how 
New York City can own you and consume you if you're not careful. Mm-hmm. And it could be a beautiful place. New York City could be this beautiful place where you, you know, go to the, we just were just at the beach. Yeah. We were just like, you know, going around um, the shops and hanging out with friends and like you could there's so much to do you could go take yoga classes yeah. you could own your life in new york city or i can give just... you the contrast of my experience yesterday on the way to k-town yeah yeah it was like i went on the subway and there was like a man who had acid like he would he had oh, yeah, acid burns yeah. and he like couldn't even like he just like had a sign and everyone was just like ignoring him and i'm like i don't have any money like, and mm-hmm. then going up, there's just, like, a man, like, begging for money again. Like, I don't have any money. Like, no one is, ever, he's, like, blind. Like, everyone is passing him. There's, like, super loud singer, like, in the subway that's just, like, chaotic. And he's just, like, screaming at the top of his lungs. It doesn't have to be good. You just walk up and there's, like, a, a swarm of people where you just, like, feel yeah. like you're just, like, dodging everyone to get out of the way. So I feel that for him. <laughs> so it could feel so suffocating. Yeah, too, so you know? suffocating. So the main character, Travis Bickle, he's not in the best, you know, he's not in the best, t- like, area. He's also not, like, having a good time with life. He's just lonely. Like, there's a quote in, in the film. He's like, I'm God's lonely man. Hmm. And he keeps seeping deeper and deeper into his own depression. And, he get, and like, he sees all the problems with New York. Like, the gangbangers, the hookers, hmm. the 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 mobs the you know the crowd the crowdedness the claustrophobia of ta- of new york city which again like was same with the internet right like you see all the problems mm-hmm. with the internet and maybe he's right maybe it is not good but i was reading comments on like an edit that someone did of taxi driver and he's like travis is his own worst enemy Hmm. because he sees all these problems but he does nothing about it and he chooses to only see the bad things and he just seeps deeper and he just sinks deeper and deeper into this misery and he he's like man the world is fucked the world is fucked and like all the other taxi drivers try to hang out with travis and he like makes the situation awkward and like weird because he's so hateful and he's so annoyed with the world and he doesn't even realize that he's the one that's like making things awkward yeah you know and i was like i could end up like this guy if i'm not careful see the self-awareness in you is like Like, so good it's scary yeah well i'm i'm blessed that i that that I, I realize these things through the media that I consume. Yeah, like through art. Yeah, yeah, I'm very, very lucky. Um, and I was like, I have to be more optimistic. Like, that that movie scared... Like, I watched it when I was in college. I was like, I don't fucking understand this art house <laughs> shit, you know? And then I watched it again. And wow. Like, and then I watched it for a third time this time around. And I was like oh, this shit scares me. Like, this this is so... Like, I could end up like this guy if I'm not careful. On the internet, in the, in the age of the internet. Yeah. You know, I could mm. be that hateful guy that just... That just criticizes the internet all the time and then never just, like, does anything. Deeper and deeper. And never does anything about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I was like, I gotta be more positive and I gotta be... Not that I have to... It's not toxic positivity, but it's just, like, believing that things are going to get better. And it's, like, if you see that as a positive world, that that's what you will build and work towards. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I want to preface... Like, that's so much harder to do. Yes. That's so fucking hard to do. And, I'm, and I don't want to... Because I'm talking like I have it all f- figured out. We're figuring it out right now. But I don't. <laughs> like, I... I, and I'm I'm saying all this with excitement right yeah. now because I'm discovering it. Yeah. And um, this is like I the checkpoint of about you this right stuff. now. Yeah, I want to make films about this stuff. My next film is about discovering your potential, which is like more optimistic, you know, and less like it, it's acknowledging like, yeah, there are fucking problems with the world. There are 
maybe I can't understand what you're going through and whatever, but like, um, the answer isn't to, to just be wallow. sink deeper. Yeah, yeah. And like wallow in your whatever. Um, it's to move forward with optimism and kindness, which could be very hard for, for a specific people, you know, and it's, it's the battle. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm still, I still have things that I need to deal with because I think all of this optimism and all of this setting boundary stuff also comes with like building a routine, like mm. having, doing things that are maybe a little bit uncomfortable. Like I'm thinking about, you know, my sister who is really having an amazing time in New York City right now. And I really admire what she's doing because she, she has an internship in, in New York City you could again you could just stay in this fucking like five by five foot room you yeah because the rooms in new york city are fucking tiny yeah you could stay in this room be a shy person not go out not mingle with anybody go to work come back go to work come back but my sister the minute she got to new york city she dropped all her stuff had dinner with my parents next day went outside, took a stroll around New York City, looked at all the vintage stores that she could find because mm. she loves, she wants to, to start thrifting and she loves shopping. And then she looked at the gyms. She mm. took some, fr she took two free passes from gyms. You got to do that immediately. Yeah, she was like yeah. testing out Smart the gyms. Girls. And then she took two free dancing classes because wow. she wants to learn how to do hip hop and she wants to learn dancing. And... And then now her, her boyfriend's here and then they just went kayaking oh. and, and like in the Hudson River and like that's like taking ownership of your over life. your life. Of yeah, your wow. life. That's beautiful. And and it's stuff that I realize that I have to do when I'm new, in New York City because I'm not might not you know, you might not be around here all the time for me to hang out with. Yeah. Or like, you know, um my friend my friends might not be around here all the time, like what am I want to do? And so she's got me thinking about what I want to do. I was like, maybe I want to go to art galleries. Um, maybe I should, uh, I should do dancing classes or I should go to a chess club or something like that. I should not be afraid to kind of yeah. do these things. I will know? think, I will say that I think it can take time. Cause I, it's yeah. crazy to me. Cause like this time last year, like May of last year, I was moving out of your mom's house and just like, doing stuff like this where I would stay at like I would sublease my friends places for as long as I could and if you're for those like I felt like I was like alone in the city and so yeah. I did have more times where I'm just like trying to push myself to go out and like literally like reaching out to people to like make videos on or mm -hmm. just like kind of forcing myself to get out but now it's crazy because I can just like schedule like a whole week of activities and like see yeah. all these different people but it did take me like the comparison from like that time where I was just like literally forcing myself out. Like my mom called me and she was like, Amory, you're in New York city right now. Like, what are you doing? Like just staying in the apartment. It can take time, but it's yeah. like, you can definitely get there. So if you're just like, if you are that opposite end of the spectrum, it's definitely hard. And it, I'm like, it took me a year to like fully be able to just like do mm -hmm. something every single but, day if I want to. Yeah. I guess at the end of the day, it's just on you. you yeah, know, completely. It. I also, I was also thinking about you along with my sister. Cause you're like, go to a Kava bar and then like, <laughs> I like meet people there or like, even like you casually talking to people at like, like when you're buying cannabis or like you're buying weed and stuff like that. I'm like, man, I, I think, and I think that's also like a feminine energy mm. too. I don't know because a lot, I know a lot of manly people are like, I don't need help. That's kind of the thing. I don't is, need to ask people to be my friend. That I think is the beauty of being independent in the city. Yeah. It's like you can actually have all these amazing connections and conversations with so many different people, but you have to be open to that too. Like you have to be yeah. in a certain vibration or a certain frequency to even do that. Cause it's like a lot of the time when people are just purchasing something, they're like, Oh, this is a transaction. It's like, you are a robot to me, but it's really never the case. Like it's always like a real person that you can genuinely like connect with. And if you can, it just makes like, that's the beauty of even looking for signs and synchronicities in like the universe. It, I feel like it just makes like everything yeah, a better place yeah, and more beautiful place. Yeah. So 
thinking about things more optimistically. Yeah. It and is, I think maybe even answer. for artists, that's hard. And it is the answer. Yeah. Yeah. For artists, completely. Oh, people think it's like, uh, I want to talk about this in this Isaiah podcast yeah. maybe, but like, um, like I think we're, we're moving out, we're moving out of a time where the conversation was just nothing matters. Like the conversation was just like, life sucks. Look at the internet. Look how it's fucking out for our kids. Look mm. how, look how, um, you know, um, World War Two happened. Like this is the metamodernism. Russia, yeah, Russia, China. Like, we're never gonna get better as a human, the human race. We got like the George Floyd stuff. We got COVID. Like, the world's racist. Like, <laughs> it's like the world is fucked. Yeah. But I think we're moving out of a. I think we're moving out of the conversation of like just, the conversation ends at the world is fucked, where now it's like yeah I understand. The world is a screwed up place. Like, I get it. But, like, let's be kind, yeah. you know, in a world that is fucked up. Let's be kind and let's figure it out together, you know. And and because nothing matters, because you're on this, like, rock for such a small period of time and what happens after you die, like, maybe that doesn't matter to you. But because of because nothing matters, like everything actually does matter. Like every mm-hmm. second that you spend with your friends, like it matters. Every second that you spend even like just strolling, like taking a stroll around the park, like that should be appreciated. You know, the simplest things. Like even in like everything everywhere. It's like laundries and laundry and taxes mm-hmm. can with the person that you love Hmm. can can matter and that's why i like rick rubin's book too it's like the creative act it's literally like you can your life can be art yeah you look at it that way it's a way of living yeah it's not it's not an occupation yeah that's how i see my life (laughs) and he made a book and i was just like wow this is so beautiful that book there's something magical about that book like there is like a I've never seen, or I'm, I'm not a reader, but I've never seen a book, like, emit so much energy. Wait, um, we should do The Artist's Way next. You should check the it Artist's out. The Artist's Way? Yeah. Okay, okay. You need to. Because yeah. he, he models it kind of after that book, too. There's, yeah, there's something about that book. It's like, a, now that I look at it, it's like there's energy coming out of it. Yeah, wow. You know, and it's just like attaching itself to the people that are yeah you know because like crazy everyone who's reading it too can is like taking stuff away from it yeah yeah even if you're not an artist yeah you you don't have to be an artist to you don't have that you don't have to have that as an occupation to want to at least strive to i don't know live like one or yeah i don't know okay to recap the last I really, I really try to manifest a conversation with you and Steezy to talk about that would be meta modernism. So that's gonna be a sneak peek yeah. into that. Yeah. But we'll save that okay, in yeah, hopes we'll for that, that conversation. Isaiah would fucking love to talk about that. Yeah, shit. I, would I, I would love. To <laughs> I would love to watch thing. you guys talk about that shit. Um, so let's go back to Avatar because you've really oh, connected yeah. to the show. What yeah. do you, What has? How did you come across it again? And like YouTube. YouTube. Because it's it keeps popping up for me in my world. Like, I literally saw a guy with, like, an Avatar shirt, and I'm just like, oh, I need to... I keep thinking about the lightning episode, because there's yeah. so much symbolism and metaphor in that, and they talk about it's a lot of spirituality. It's so beautiful. They talk about winter solstice and, like, summer yeah. solstice, and I'm, I'm, like, usually the only person who talks about that in my friend group, so I'm just like, wow, this show. Like, I really recommend yeah. it a good show. I, I also searched it up on, like, Google, and it has 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm like, yeah, that, that shit deserves 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. Like, because I rewatched it, you know, now as a full time artist, act- which is fucking wild to see, you know, as a full time artist uh, and a storyteller. Yeah. Watching um, that show, I was like, how could you fit all of these complex ideas into a kid's show? It's so beautiful. And. Um, 
I think I think it's coming up more and more now. It's gotta be because you know there's more Avatar stuff coming out. Oh it's really? The, it's the only okay. We're living in this weird age in movie making right now, where everything is kind of boring. Yeah, everything is a prequel or a sequel. Everything was is like a live action version of a popular animation in the two thousands. Like everything that is being made right now has already existed as a popular thing before and they're just remaking it and it's kind of boring avatar the last airbender is the only and i hope that the production studios don't ruin it but avatar <laughs> the last airbender is the only show slash world that is present i don't give a shit about marvel i don't give a shit about dc universe i don't really care about the avatar the blue people but i want to see the world that they build hmm. with avatar with avatar the last airbender and how they expand what is the next avatar look like you know and they, they play around with like such complex ideas like politics and like um n like nations which can be representative of like the country the powerful countries of today like yeah and how they handle situations you know and how s you have to walk a fine line and like um i think that's why i like it because it's so real you know and also just on like i i also just love zuko the character because i can the fire prin to. prince He's the prince okay, that yeah. got banished yeah. and then the became the guy. fire fire lord. I love him because he is is like me. Hmm. He was the angry guy. He was the guy that thought that he needed to be this angry powerful firebender to restore his honor, to please his dad and to please the fire nation. And he goes on this journey where his dad banishes him and he has this trauma of being a part of the royal family. And you could see that he is, he has this anger within him. He's like, and this toxic masculinity in the first two seasons of The Last Airbender. And you could see how that slowly transitioned and like Iroh Uncle Iroh um, is like, who is more of a father figure than his actual father, um, guided him and was like a son to him towards the right direction of what a firebender actually should be, mm. you know? And I was like, that's me. Like, I was the angry kid too. You know, I tried to please my dad and I tried to please the world around me and try to fit in and I wanted like you know and I was even in college I was an angry kid you know I was like I need to prove to my to my parents and I need to prove to the world around me that I could be the greatest filmmaker of all time I could get a 4.0 GPA Dean's List I could, I could prove all this stuff mm. and I did but I was like angry while mm. doing it and and to see this fictional character in a kid's show go through a similar journey. I was like, that is like, I love the world that Avatar has built, but I specifically love Zuko, the character. And then to see in The Legend of Korra, um, he's old now. He's like in his 90s and he's got his pet dragon that he didn't have and like, He's a completely different man. He's like a calmer hmm. dude. And I need to print out a picture of 15, 16 year old Zuko, this angry kid, and a picture of 90 year old Zuko. I need, I need to put that on my wall. <laughs> That's beautiful. You know, because it's like, I want to be like that when I grow older. Like, I want to be like Zuko uh, when he's 90. You know, and I, that's what I'm striving to become or like Uncle Iroh, you know, so I'm making all these realizations this time around as a 22 year old um, watching a kid's show um, about these characters and 
I mean, on that note too, like I've been trying to collect all these characters that I really admire um, in in other in media in general. Like I'm trying to. Wayman is another example of someone that like I would like to aspire to become. And then you got Zuko, I got Uncle Iroh as well. I have a whole list, but there are characters now that I aspire to become. Okay, I think it's really interesting that you said like, oh, Zuko is doing all these things and he became angry. Or you said in your childhood, you were like, I could do, I could get good grades. I could like do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's translating to your adult life where you're like, you're, you're excelling in business. You're doing the business thing. You're doing like all these other things where yeah. it's like, what is the true thing that you want to focus on? I don't know if that's like relevant. Yeah. Yeah. You also said like uncle Iroh was like the guide, like the sun guiding, just like the language that you use was like literally so beautiful. I think you meant, I think you, at first I was like, Oh, did he mean uncle? But you said son. And I'm like, I wonder if you meant the son, but I think it was no, no, no. no like, Uncle Iroh, like, that's that's what the character that was guiding yeah. um, Zuko as if Zuko was, like, his, his son. own son. Okay. Okay. The way that you said it, it was literally, like, as if it was a son. Like, oh, the light no. sun, though, yeah. it was, like, kind of extremely poetic. Okay. And then it's interesting because a lot of the time when I watch, like, I don't watch, like, a lot of YouTube, mm -hmm. I feel. And I don't often, like, feel like I can really engage in TV or movies. And then recently, I think I've started, like, trying to more. And, like, I watched Everything Everywhere all at once for the second time in a movie theater by myself. And I was like, wow, it was emotionally moving. And yeah. even yesterday, I was with Nick, and she was watching SWAT. And I was, like, stressed out by the TV show. Mm -hmm. So I think... You also help me understand the importance of, like, art because you really see yourself and you seem to be, like, changed by these characters that you see in these shows. Sure. Yeah, so, like, who sure. who else? You kind of already mentioned, like, like Waymond and, like, Zuko. But yeah. do you have any other characters that you, like, aspire to be? Yeah, I, yeah. There's Or, like, are inspired by? Off, off the top of my head. So, uh, Waymond, I, I think I described this because of his soft energy. And power. And, po and he's the most powerful guy, you know. Zuko, because I can relate to him a lot um, as, a, as a kid. And then there's this other guy. He, from There's this guy from the French Dispatch. He's like this old, old man. Uh, it's a Wes Anderson movie called The French Dispatch, which is inspired by um, The New Yorker, which is that real magazine, you know. And it's a very beautiful, artistic magazine. Um, and in the French Dispatch, um, very briefly, maybe he maybe overall has like 15 minutes of screen time, maybe 10 minutes of screen time. Hmm. There's this character played by Bill Murray. I think it's Sir Arthur Howitzer Jr., something like that. <laughs> I don't know. But he's the head honcho of the French Dispatch, this magazine that is very popular. It's like, five, I think it was like 500,000 subscribers to the magazine uh, of the French Dispatch. And you might, when you watch the movie, you might not think anything of him. He's only on screen for 10 minutes. He's like, the, the main idea isn't even about him. But there's a very specific thing that Wes Anderson does. And I think, I think, I'd like to think that that's what he was trying to strive for. But it's like, the businessman the that is actually an artist mm. the the guy that pr runs a very successful business but he favors and he like Champions. tries to put the art first mm. and you could see it within like the subtleties of like bill murray's acting like um he'll be like a He'll be very stern and stiff with like the data people mm -hmm. and with like the, um, and then it, it's like so beautiful. Like it's so subtle too. Cause Wes Anderson movies, they talk so quickly mm -hmm. and they're like, uh, we only have this amount of paper and we don't have enough money and we need this amount of, um, we need to cut some stories. And he's like, nobody's cutting anybody's stories. We're buying more paper. We're cutting advertisements. And it was like such a quick decision of like art first, mm. then the business, wow. then the money. But it's art first. And he's like, we're not cutting anybody's stories. Buy more paper, less advertisements, go. 
you know. And then the other thing, there was like another scene where like he was reading the story of one of his journalists and you could see the journalist as like the pure artist that he's trying to protect. And like the journalist is like, he's reading the journalist paper and he's like reading it. And then he's also like looking at the money that she spent, uh, like while going on this, um, journey to kind of write her papers. And he's like, you spent, you spent money on a desk. He's like, why is this desk like not good enough? And she was like, don't ask me, don't ask me why I needed another desk. He's like, I just, she's like, I just wanted another desk. Just like, and he was like, you also bought like this, this hotel. Like, why did you need this hotel? She's like, because I, because I needed it to write. And he was like, fine, fine. If that's what you need to, if that's what you need to do. And like, he's like so protective over the artists making stuff, you Mm -hmm. know? Um, that was another character that I, I really admired because, like, I would like to be like that, too. I would like to be, especially in creator camp, mm. I would like to be the guy that prioritizes art in the world and that not... I, I feel like cause there's also, like, some sort of savior maybe mm. complex there, which I would... I mean, like, I, I don't want that to be the case, but, like, I want to be that guy that like looks out for the artists you know and like make sure that the businessmen like they don't man- try to manipulate them you know um and make sure that they, they people have a safe space to create and it's all, also for myself too you mm-hmm. know because i'm an artist as well like those people you know like isaiah you know Tanner, Cameron, Aaron. Yeah. Those are my people, you know? And so Sir Arthur Howitzer Jr., I believe is his name. That was another character that I have print that I need to print out and put on my wall as well. And you mentioned that you want to be that person even on YouTube for other people to see. Yeah. And I, I don't, it's not even that like I want it to. It's just like that's how, how it ended up to be. Hmm. That's just how I, that's just how it came to be, you know? And it's funny because, like, I've always wanted to be a teacher or a professor. Mm-hmm. Professor Aang. Some sorts. I don't, I don't know if I like that. I, I'll just embrace it. I'll <laughs> okay. just embrace it at this point because so many, it's just a joke that, be, you know, people call me professor. Um, but I would like to, that's what I would like to do in the future, you know, maybe when I'm done with this filmmaking stuff, like teach at a university or something, or like at a school, you know, or like be that person for the kids that maybe need it, you know, because, you know, in college is such a transitional period in your life and you're still very vulnerable, you know, or even being a high school teacher. I don't know. I still, um, yeah, me substitute teaching. I'm just like, I need to do this again. Like I need to do this the next school year. Yeah. So it's like so fucking cool. And um, that's what I would like to do in the future. And I guess I'm blessed enough to have found it and to do it now too, because like, that's just kind of where the universe has guided me towards, yeah. you know, it's like I can, I'm making art, but I'm making it in such a way where I'm still teaching people things like very directly teaching yeah. people things. Cause I'm implementing things that I've seen in my favorite movies techniques that I've seen in my favorite movies and I'm creating it. I like to think that I'm creating it in an artistic way, but also, um, it is also an educational tool. Mm -hmm. It is not only a, is not only, um, an art, art piece, but it also teaches you something vice versa you know it's not just an educational piece it's a it's a piece of art where if you re, you could rewatch it two three times and see the subtleties and like see the filmmaking techniques and use it yourself you know um so it's an interesting thing that i'm still figuring out but that's where like my youtube channel to take my youtube channel is maybe to show people a more 
artistic approach to the creator industry where you don't have to where you don't have to you know uh, sell your soul or try and play the YouTube algorithm and worry about watch time and click through rate in order to succeed you don't because you don't have to you literally yeah. don't have to think about those things to succeed um, but that's all the narrative is right now on YouTube that's all it is you know they've done and like people like Colin and Samir and like Mr. Beast they have done a great job of covering that area of the creator industry mm -hmm. but that's the only conversation being had right now and I'd like to start a new one I have okay well maybe let's go to new wave and see if there are any new developments since the last time we spoke on that yeah I am just worried that it's gonna people are gonna turn it into a business or people are gonna mm -hmm. turn it into because it, it I'm starting to see its success there's like people like there's like a thousand videos on the new wave wow uh, that is a wave. wave which is f fucking that's wild. crazy I didn't know that um there's like a thousand people on the new wave and um you know people are putting the new wave in the front of their videos or putting the hashtag in their videos and it's really awesome but i'm worried that it's the whole point of it was to encourage people to find their own path but i'm worried that it's just going to be another genre on mm. youtube now you're just like mr beast now you are just like it is not the new wave it is a coming of age genre hmm. because the majority of the creators in the new wave right now they, they're making like documentaries and vlogs about their life you know um and that's awesome but that's not what i meant by the new wave <laughs> yeah that's so what did not... you mean by the new wave because that's the... Be yourself build yeah. your world figure it out yourself you can make a living on youtube or you can make art on YouTube that is not driven by the analytics or driven by a genre, you know? Because right now, it's not even click-through rate and watch time at this point. It's like, well, you gotta find your niche, you know? And what it feels like on YouTube right now is, um, and I think it's great, it's, it's starting to improve from the speedy tiktok paced content like trying to be more optimistic about that you know um but the co i think the narrative right now on youtube is like it's not even about watch time or click through rate. it's about if you're a carpenter like and you get a million views on a carpentry video youtube shakes your hand it's like congratulations you make you carve wood on youtube you make beautiful furniture using wood on youtube and the minute that you talk about your wife i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna take that away from you you know i'm gonna yeah. take the views and your living away from you now because you're talking about your wife i didn't hire you to talk about your wife i i put you in the algorithm so that you could carve wood you know and the new wave is kind of like no 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 like Anne marie an unemployed millennial is its own genre and you could build a world where you don't have to follow it. and not that it's bad to become a, a carpenter or be, to become you know a game show host like mr beast if that's what you want to do go ahead and do it but if what you wanted to do was build a personality on youtube if what you wanted to do was tell personal stories and make art on youtube like you need to do it on your own terms which means that you can't look at the numbers which means that you can't look at the click-through rate you should be making the thumbnails that you enjoy you should be having the conversations that mean the most to you and through that and through understanding mm -hmm. yourself over the course of like two to three years then you get to a place where you can potentially make a living from just being you that i think was what i meant in terms of new wave for YouTube. Yeah, I love I right? love that. I did not mean <laughs> that you should film your life and be a coming of age vlog YouTuber. But it seems like and 
if Colin and Samir ever watch this or whatever, like, that's not what the new wave is. Because mm -hmm. I know that's, that, that's the conversation that's being pushed around is like people filming things about their life, being sad, and then being happy. <laughs> And then like, and then and like then a deep convo. And then like, uh, you know, I'm dropping out of school or like I'm going on an adventure. That's just another genre. That's just the that's the coming of age genre. We awesome. We create created a genre, but that's not why. That's at least for me. That's not why I wanted to make. That's not why I started the YouTube New Wave. So where I'm at with that is I'm just worried that people think that it's a genre and are starting to box it in, which is not what I wanted it to be. This is where I think you need to like, you need to, cause you see the world for this more than I think anyone. And I love this world that you're building, but I have also seen that kind of like, I think people, you, see, you know what I'm talking about. I know, about, I know right? exactly what you're talking about. But I think this is where you need to, like, come on or, like, speak about it in podcasts or, like, you need yeah. to define it how you see it. And then if that fits, if the people making In The Wave, like, are making that type of content, then they can, like, they can be a part of it. But I think it's, like, kind of defining the boundaries of, like, what you see it as. Because I think you're building, like, that is a beautiful description to me. Yeah, yeah. It's a new way of making videos. Yeah. It's, like, a new form of making videos that is not driven by... An algorithm. And as soon as it becomes like a category, or, yeah. yeah, it's just like you're kind of doing the game. exact same you're, thing. You're playing the game yeah. now. Yeah. It's not, that, that's not why I wanted to do it, you know? It's yeah, like, that makes so much sense. The Emery videos, if if it's just, if that's what you want it to be, if you, what you want it to be is an Anne Marie video or an Anne Marie podcast, then it, then it should not try and be like, you know, Joe Rogan's thing or yeah. like, I think that's what I was trying to say with the new yeah. wave, and and like, I think even that is a very he helpful differentiator. Yeah. Because I, when you describe it, I'm like, oh yes, I love this, and then it does kind of get muddled and confusing when you see like the actual videos. Like if you try to do research, you're like, okay, so what is it exactly? Yeah. 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 It, and then like, it also goes layers deeper because past that, I, I also think that YouTube is bringing a whole new way of creating mm. to filmmaking, right? Where you can use your iPhone and where you could use your photo booth camera on your laptop and you could like, you know, um, use things in your home, like rearrange furniture in your room to like, you know, uh, make some cool shit, you know? I also think that's the new wave. Mm. Um, I also think that like, vlogging as an art form can be the new wave but like that that's ten, like that's like five years from now yeah you know right now it's like it's like let's try and be ourselves you yeah know? i love that um my last last podcast with was with megan klein and we talked a lot about feminine energy and she yeah. related it a lot to business and then i appreciated that she related it to creating too mm -hmm. and she said like a lot of the last few years have been we've been operating in a very masculine era. Yeah. Like she gave the example of like the pandemic. It's like they were using data. They were telling you what to do. And she believes, or her astrologer believes that we are entering the age of like divine feminine, which is actually kind of exactly what you described the new wave to be. It's like using your own intuition, ignoring the metrics and the data and the algorithm and just fully leaning into like what you believe or what you think is interesting and what yeah. you want to portray. That kind of is the uh, feminine ascension, I guess. <laughs> I think so, yeah. And it's it's exciting, you know? And at this point in my career, I've been making YouTube videos for three years now. I'm, I'm at a point where I'm just like, fuck it. Like, I my last magic trick, I've tried everything. Like, it, and, and I'm not saying this. I like to think that I'm not saying this with an ignorant mindset, I've tried the analytics route. Yeah. I've gone viral with the analytics route. I've spoken to so many people about this thing. It's my life. Like yeah. I, I like wake up, I think about it. I eat it, you know, like I like, it's my, it's my fucking life. So, and, 
And now at this point in my life, it's like I've reached my last magic trick. The last magic trick that I can learn, which is, I'm gonna wait for that to, to go. The last magic trick in my life, which is to be myself. Mm. That's, that's it. Like that's all I got. Wow. You know, is to be myself, to set my boundaries, I know my potential, and I've also accepted that in the most optimistic way possible that it might not work out and I might yeah. need to get a job. Yeah. And that's that's okay. And I feel like that's also just meeting exactly where you are and where you need to be. Yeah. Okay, one thing, this is probably the last topic that I'll touch on before okay. asking the last question. At Creator Camp, we all did a, um, what's it called, stand-up? Oh, improv. Improv. <laughs> yeah. And one of the improv activities was yes and. And yeah. you said that you were using that for your method of creation. And then you shared that with me. And then I think it's really helpful for maybe overthinkers or artists. Yeah. Can you talk about how you did that? The ambiance of New York, Brooklyn. Yeah. And can you... I'm sure it's also carried into other avenues of your life. I think it's also just kind of like a more optimistic way of creating. It's just like get up and go, you know, like, yeah. So I, I actually realized that there might, there might also be flaws to the yes and okay. thing too. Talk to me. But um, the Rick Rubin book solved it for me. Okay. Which <laughs> Walk is me through sick, that development. Which is fucking like the, the best thing ever. You know? The universe is Cause providing. Because I, like, I like found that and then I found this thing. Yeah. And then now I got to this thing. Um so we did improv at creator camp uh, just to get everyone loosened up and stuff like that because the event afterwards was the 90 minute film festival mm -hmm. where you had to make a film in 90 minutes it could be a minute long it could be 30 seconds long but i thought that was very very fun um I thought it was the best thing that we did at the event. I agree. But, and you guys should continue doing that. Yeah. And I also compile so, yeah. them and like have it on a website yeah, or something so to yeah. show the development of that. Um, but uh, the yes and thing was perfect as a starter point because um, to explain it, um, basically what we did was uh, we maybe had a group of like 20 people in each group and um, the improv leaders... The, the guys that we, we kind of um, got to come and do the improv stuff, they, they set up 10 chairs. So half the group uh, sat in the chairs and, and, and the other 10 were the crowd. So we were just watching. And she's like, okay, I am the CEO of a skateboard company. And we're trying to come up with the next great skateboarding idea. You know, um, give me some ideas. And basically, the gist of the game is that you can't say no to an idea. So it's like, well, what if we had square wheels on the, on the skateboard? And everyone's like, yes, yes, I love that idea. And maybe we should have a rocket launcher on the back. And everyone's like, yes, yes, I love that idea. And it just keeps going and spiraling. And I remembered that specific idea went to like what if we had a kitchen in the back of the skateboard and like a grandma that cooked us food while we were skating you know and then it was like and then it was so funny because Aiden was like guys I think we should scrap all of the ideas that we just came up with and everyone had to go like yes that's a great idea <laughs> you know <laughs> uh, and it was so funny but and it was so like I didn't realize at the time I didn't realize at the time that it was so useful until four hours later when we did the 90 minute film festival. And I was in a group with my friend Tanner, Stay, and um, Natalie. If you guys know. The filmmakers. Natalie Lynn. And they're, Tanner and Natalie and myself, I guess in the community, you could see Wait, can us. Can you as, add their names so if people actually wanted to like look? Okay, yeah. At Natalie Lynn at Wicked Stew, at Rachel and Stay. Okay. Or Stay and Thank Rach. You. At Stay and Rach. S-T-E and Rach. You could spell Rach. <laughs> I'll link uh, it somewhere. Yeah, you could link it somewhere. Or you could put it on the fucking... Okay, yeah. yeah. But um, 
we did a we did a 90 minute film festival and you would think like everyone was looking at our group and they're like if you don't win this <laughs> if you i don't know what you're doing if you don't win this you know because you guys are all filmmakers like and um i was like you might think that like we w but like natalie spends four months working on her videos mm. tanner spent half a year working on his last video <laughs> yeah. and i spend months on mine so yeah, like that's funny to make something in 90 minutes this is we're actually like a hindrance to each other yeah wow that's funny we ran into a room we got our and and to add on to the challenge it's like you needed you needed to make the film with different items so we had uh we had a plunger hot wheels car and a deck of cards and we're like what the fuck do we do with like these things and we're like laying it out on the table and we're like this makes zero sense this is so conf like and then we're like must have spent 10 15 minutes trying to come up with an idea i was like fuck it let's just film something and then i just had like tanner pull his pants down because we had a plunger <laughs> so i like tanner pull his pants down and like do some some funny shit like on, i don't remember on, that part of it, <laughs> need to watch on, it on, on uh on um the the video oh, it didn't i don't think it ended oh, okay, up in okay. the video <laughs> um because we had a plunger and we were in the bathroom so we were like what if we did something funny and then it, all of a sudden it started going you know it started going and and i was like yes and and then stay was like what if the plunger chased tanner around what if it was a monster what if it's okay and then I I was like, what if we yeah. did a horror film i'm like yes that's a great idea and i'm like how about the cards how about the cards and it was like natalie was such a shy person she was so into sorry um she was so into the idea uh and she was like i'll act too and then and natalie would never fucking do this she actually like she actually chose not to do the improv thing because she was so shy. Sorry. That no, was, it was like, I was like, I was I felt scared. really I was uncomfortable. Scared. Yeah. And what I said, I felt like what I said was really stupid. <laughs> no, but it was like, that's kind of what you need to kind yeah. of let out. You know? Yeah. Um, but Natalie was scared of that. But all of a sudden she was so into this thing. And Stay was like, what if we played goldfish? We were, we were playing goldfish and Tanner needed to go to the bathroom. And like, and we're like, yes. And then, and then when Tanner goes to the bathroom, we hear sounds of him getting beaten up by the plunger. And he like opens the door and the plunger kind of sucks him into the toilet. And then what if the plunger starts chasing Natalie and stay around? And and then like it became this whole funny thing and we had, a, by the end of the 90 minutes, we had this very funny horror film with a plunger that killed three friends while they were playing go fish uh and it was so fucking dumb but it was the funniest thing and the video is out somewhere <laughs> now you're gonna have to link it <laughs> yeah um so how have you how have you taken that to your channel it inspired me and motivated me so much because i was like damn i overthink my ideas so much mm. and it hit me and I realized that sitting and overthinking and staring at a blank screen is not creating it's not even art that is just insecurity mm. you know that is just your insecurities taking control of you and you need to control that and that might come with make coming up with the dumbest ideas mm. first and then it'll spiral into something that is more meaningful over time. But you have to get started. And if you can't think of anything, then it's not worth it to to just sit there and stare at a blank screen. It, it's more useful to go for a walk or yeah. to go to sleep or to exercise. And your subconscious is going to work its way through. Yeah. And it's so scary because the world around you tells you that you have to force things that is america that that's like capital <laughs> that's like capitalism yeah you know capitalism is so like don't fucking trust the universe mm. i need strict data to know where my audience is i need i need to know that the s&p 500 is going to like take me to the moon you know i need to have strict data to know how to succeed and it is so not what art is it is so what not the universe is you need to trust it 
And I think a lot of, at least for me personally, a lot of the sitting and thinking and forcing it maybe does come from the culture that we mm. grew up in. Now that I think about it. And it's much more useful to go for a walk and trust that your subconscious is working it out or, or to yes. And to the, to the, um, you know, idea and with my last video even though i'm not super proud of it because i rushed the ending um i'm very proud of it in that i made it in seven days mm. and it's a pretty good it's a pretty damn good video for like seven days and the, the only reason why i was able to do it because i yes ended to the end product yeah i think my last video was that my last my second my last last video i had like this idea of breakup season and then I was kind of blocked on it and you were just like, what if you just like, yes, and did yourself. And then it's literally just like talking to yourself. Then you're just like, you bring up this one yeah. idea and then you're like, yes. And also this, this is just like the next thought that I had. Yeah. So it's like starting with like a blank canvas and just like allowing yourself to like go there. Yeah. But I realized that's great and all. Oh yeah. What was the limitation? The limitation there is the idea just might not be good. <laughs> yeah. You know? The, I, like you might yes and to a shit idea <laughs> yeah you might paint an <laughs> <You> ugly <know>? ass <laughs> yeah yeah Painting. so like so then what's the solution there then i read rick rubin's book well the solution is to so fucking simple it's just to try different things mm -hmm. you shouldn't be sitting and staring at a paper and overthinking things but you also shouldn't you also shouldn't uh think of one idea and just go with that one you know if you look at it and it's not actually a good idea then like it's like a I, I looked at it like a tree, you know, with different branches. Mm. It's like you have the core theme of the idea. The core theme is breakup season. Now what's the story around the theme, right? Well, you have the trunk. Maybe you could do this thing. Oh, maybe that doesn't work. Maybe. And then one of them is going to lead to like a fruit or something like yeah, that. That wow. is like. That's beautiful. That's, that's the way to go. That's the route to go. So with my last video, I was so proud of my last video because what I did was I sat myself down. And I just, all I did for like for like hours a day, I had a notebook and I had my laptop. I was like, what if I did this? I was thinking that maybe I should do this idea. I don't think I should do this idea because of this thing. And I don't think I should edit like this because of this thing. And, and I was like, okay, the best option is to go with this option because of this, this, and this. And then all of a sudden I was like, I knew why I was making a these decisions and I was making the best decisions and I wasn't just sitting and staring at a blank screen anymore. Mm. I was working through it. And if I was stuck on a sentence, it's because I was working through like the poetry of it. I was working mm. through the wording of it. And I wasn't just staring at a blank blank screen with no ideas. I had ideas. I was just needed to toy around with it, mm. you know? And so it was the improv class added on top of um, Rick Rubin's ideas of finding the finding the best ideas that led me to I think that now I'm finally before all this since I was 12 since I was making videos since I was 12 like the first 10 years of my filmmaking content creation life was dedicated to I, I don't I just, I realized I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. And now I still don't know what I'm doing, but I finally understand what certain things are now. Like, I'm like, now I know why I'm making a decision. Whereas before I just made a decision because I thought it was cool. But even if you think it's cool, like, why do you think it's cool? Yeah. Well, because this has never been done before. And understanding why you did something and moving forward and not getting stuck and trusting the universe, that is such a wild discipline that I had just started to learn with this last video. Wow. I feel mm -hmm. like it's like in every avenue of life, you have to learn all the rules so that you can know which rules you can break, you know? Yeah. And I just, and I just started. Yeah. That's how I, I'll be on YouTube for 11 years in January with my Amory Chase Isn't channel. Crazy? Yeah. And I kind of feel like I'm at the same place. Like, I'm like, okay, I understand this now. And I understand like what I want to do and like what I, yeah, I've like learned the rules and I'm like, okay, I don't need to follow these rules. Like which, which rules do I need to follow? Yeah. Yeah. And 
and and you do have to go through the shitty maybe you do yeah. have to go through the shitty times where you think you have to follow the algorithm yeah i think so i think it's you all know. part of the process yeah okay my last question for you today is what manifestations do you want to put out into the universe hmm can you want to go first no <laughs> Uh, <laughs> manifestations that I'm putting out into the universe currently. Yeah. I guess I said it already. It's like, I want to be an artist. Yeah. You know? And I want to... It's so fucking simple, but I just want to... It's so simple, okay? But I just want to have control over my life. And mm. and in that, in, in return, um, that'll make me happy. Wow. Like, you know, I want to have control. I want to f- not feel like the businesses and YouTube own me. Yeah. Right now, it's, they still do own me. Mm-hmm. You know, right now, I still have to stay up until 3 a.m. working on a video when I don't want to. But I hope that after this next video, I can start on that journey by searching for places to stay in New York City here maybe i think you like this place a lot by um you know setting my boundaries with the businesses so that i could focus on my videos and by spending time with people that want to pursue the same thing that i want to pursue i think that's what i want to manifest yeah honestly i i just want to be like I don't know, like, ha- is it, like, it's so simple, but I, it's like, I just want to be happy, you know? That is actually what I always wish for. When yeah. I have to wish for anything, I'm like, happiness. Yeah, that's what I'm working towards right now. Yeah. And there are things that I'm very happy about right now that I realize all these things, but I still get anxious because, like, YouTube still definitely does it own my life you know and whenever my manager texts me about an integration that business owns my life for the month that I have to make the video you know especially as an artist where you Mm. every every frame means something to you and you want to make every frame the best it could possibly be then to like to have a business go like I want that to be done in a month Mm -hmm. um and it's not even a thing that you like so so those are things that i'm work actively working through right now so that i can i can fully embrace that that artist lifestyle yeah manifesting discipline Mm. and yeah i um I was, I kind of told you like several weeks ago, I was just like pretty sad and miserable. I'd just come back from like a big business meeting and I was just not in a good mood. And I journaled, I was like, what would make me happy right now? What would get me out of this misery right now? And I was like, I couldn't think of anything. I was like, damn, is the world just this gray? Like, am I just this sad right now? Like, how the fuck do I get out of this? And I remembered that I just bought a drawing pad Mm. the day before and it just arrived. And I started drawing and testing things out. I had so much fun drawing. I woke up the next day with this like jolt of excitement and joy that I got to learn how to draw for my next video. You know, and then I got to learn, and this was a new addition to my world. And it's sick. I feel like that's going to be, you. like, game-changing for your videos. Thank you. Yeah, I'm learning. Um, and this is, like, kind of the first step. And it's not perfect, but it's so exciting. You should make, like, a playlist of the videos that you watch to learn how to do whatever you're doing. Because it's kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah. Then- I, I definitely will. Um, but that is, like, that is, like, the only thing I remember almost giving up writing that journal because I just couldn't think of anything that would make me happy. And then I and I closed my journal and I was like, oh, wait a minute. The drawing made me happy. 
but like let's dig a little bit deeper like why did the drawing make me happy because it, it was like this new addition to my world it's just like when I get happy when I buy a new shirt or like mm. when I get excited about you know um changing thumbnails to my videos because like I understand what my world looks like now you know and I realized that's what excited me and I thought the whole time and this is so wild but like I thought the whole time I was like um, maybe a relationship would make me happier, <laughs> you know? I think that's a thing that a lot of people fall into, too. Yeah. So I they, like, like, will rush to get into a, a girlfriend would make me happier right now mm. because I'm just miserable by myself and I'm just lonely. Yeah. And... And then I, I started to go down that path of, like, okay, drawing, building my world. That's what excites me. If I... Like, it, and that's not too far away from now. You know, making the decision to cut off certain brand deals that I don't want to do, setting my boundaries with Creator Camp and making letting them know that maybe I don't want to live with you guys like and to get my own place and to decorate my own place and to have ownership over my life and to exercise. And then that's when I started to figure out I was like, oh, a relationship is not what actually would make me happy right now. Um, and you're you would be taking approaching action it. in my own life. Yeah. Doing all those things would make me happy. I want to do more of those things. That's why I admire what my sister is doing. Mm. She's she's really good at it. And I don't think I was ever good at building my world. Mm. Wow. I don't think I'm good at it. So There's so many people. Jade, I think, is pretty good at it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I think that... Yeah, I think my sister's really good at it. You know, she knows exactly what she likes. She yeah. knows exactly what she likes. And I I really, like, appreciate that. Like, and I really admire that now. Or, like, Tyler is, like, a master at it. He mm -hmm. makes a living out of it, you know. Pharrell. Um, yeah, that's what I would like to do. I'm not... I'm not naturally good at it, I don't think. Yeah. I think it's because, like, I think maybe if you're focused on inner world a lot, like, it takes, like, a little while to, like, build the outer world. Yeah. Because yeah. I think you are very good at inner world. And I feel like that's kind of, like, where I live, like, a lot, too. If you're, like, if you're journaling all the time. Like, you journal a lot. Yeah, yeah. That's, like, an inner world thing. Yeah. I like how you said the relationship thing. Because, like, I feel like when I was, like, tw I don't know, early 20s, I was just, like, desperately, so desperate and wanted a relationship. But it wasn't until I started building my world and just, like, building the things around me. Mm -hmm. And then you're not coming at a relationship from a place of lack. It's just, like, you're full yeah. and whole. And I don't know if I'm there yet. Yeah. Know? I don't know if I... Sometimes I still want a relationship just because I'm sad. But, like, I, that's not good, you know? Yeah. Just to, like, fill that hole. Yeah. That emptiness. So... Yeah. Yeah, I think that I'm manifesting my world because I see it now. And yeah. it took me three years of struggling on YouTube to see it. And it comes so now. I just think about it. It just comes so naturally to my sister or like to certain people. You know, those people are really those people grow YouTube channels really quickly. Hmm. But those people also might not understand how to handle emotions yeah because and Elliot's a good example of someone that knows how to build a world but um I don't know if he if growing so quickly for him was actually good you know yeah I think even um, he rec or he said that like it's yeah it's like kind of like winning the lottery I'm so blessed like I thought we I think I won sometimes I think I won the lottery because I'm still I I'm not at a thousand subscribers struggling to like get one video to go viral. Yeah. But I'm at a hundred thousand subscribers for the last three years, two years. And I have an audience, decent sized audience that cares about me. Yeah. But I'm not big enough to have a fast paced life. Yeah. And, and I, I'm, I'm sitting in a lot of like, I sit in a lot of the pain of like, why am I? not this why am I not that and like I'm so grateful because I get to work through all of that now when I'm 20 yeah I do I do so. think for like the people who blow up when they're super young early 20s I'm just like I actually 
I think I feel bad for that yeah. a little bit because it's like you need to establish yourself as a person before I think mm-hmm. I mean not before but it's like it's important to do both at the same time yeah for sure if you and if sometimes if you just grow too fast you don't actually have the ability to do that yeah so I even think I'm lucky in that area I think so too yeah, yeah. and I was also talking to Stuart who is the president of IMI um and he was telling me that oh I was telling him that like I was like Stuart because he's trying to like um do a bunch of like grants and stuff like that I was like I actually think no lie like I struggled so much I basically went through every like crevice and every struggle that a YouTuber could could go through in their 20s um and I, I feel like I just know how to guide, like, or I feel like I know how to, like, lift people up out of ruts because I, I've been through it. Yeah. I've been through a lot of it. Not all of it. I don't, I don't, probably never going to go through, get through all of it. But, like, you know, I figured it out. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. A whole other synchronicity. Okay. I know this is going on for a long time. And this camera died. Yeah, it died a long time ago. Oh. <laughs> it's um, okay. <laughs> I started watching jujitsu videos, hmm. and um, you're gonna love this. You're gonna fucking love this. I I was like listening to a Jocko Willing podcast, and he has a co-host Echo Charles, and they're both black belts in jujitsu. Hmm. And it takes about 10, 12 years to get to a black belt in jujitsu. Um, and they were saying a black belt. It's not about if you can beat this person or that person. I mean, for certain dojos, like, um, maybe that is the case. If, a, if, you know, a brown belt can beat a black belt, then you should probably be a black belt. Or if a, or a white belt can beat a yellow belt, then you should probably be a yellow belt. Mm-hmm. But for them, it's like, for them, it's like, no, no, no. It's like, it's you against you. Your master will only give you the black belt if you are your at your kind of fullest potential. Mm. So they were like, it, sometimes it's, I even see that as a compliment that you're not getting your black belt fast enough. Mm. Wow. Because, That's a beautiful way to look at it. Right? Because your master thinks you could go further. Yeah. And you're not going further. He's like, there might be a 50-year-old that start, that's, start jujitsu and maybe they're in their 60s when they get their black belt because they reach their fullest potential at that point at that age in their life yeah but a 20 year old who's been doing jujitsu for two years can just dis- probably destroy the 60 year old with a black belt but that's not what but the the 20 year old that could destroy the black belt 60 year old black belt like that person might like might only be a blue belt and they're not going to get their black belt because they could destroy a 60 year old you know kind of going back to the lightning thing the zuko it's like yeah i know i love that yeah so even i don't even do jujitsu but i was like listening to it it's like maybe i should give it a try i I don't want to get beaten up. <laughs> yeah, me too. But Someone's I'm, like DM me and be like, hey, I think you'd really like jujitsu. It was like a guy and I was like... <laughs> that's, it's like scary, but like... <laughs> but like to see even that simple lesson yeah. of like... God's just given me a really important role. Wow. You know, like... Like, I don't even believe it. I don't even know if I believe in God, but like some sort of higher power. It's like, I'm here. I'm still here because like... I'm still a brown belt because like... I, j- I just got a more important role to play. One you know? time you and said... And I got to learn more. You were like, I think we've chosen, like, the hard path on YouTube. It wasn't even we chose. Like, we're just given the hard yeah. path. But, like, <laughs> but like it's also um, awesome. Yeah. Too. Yeah. You know? I agree. That's why I needed to do this podcast. I feel like I needed to do this podcast yeah. to, like, to, like, let all that out. Yeah, I feel like we covered all the ground, I think. I a think if we it, do yeah. one with... I- Zaya, then it would be much more about art and stuff yeah. like that. But it basically, would have covered every a lot of things that we learned from yeah. from our last podcast. Yeah. Here. Also, we have new haircuts. Yes, we do. Bangs. Perm, shorter hair. 
next time we'll be building our world even more yeah and i need to dress better too me too man this is all right this is all right <laughs> yeah i'm fine like, with this but it could be better <laughs> yeah that's funny yeah okay well thank you for being on the unemployed millennial podcast thank you for having me i always love your updates and developments you are truly like every single time i call you i feel like you've made the most drastic change out of like anyone so it's like fun to pour like love and energy into you yeah because you're no, just like exciting. you take it and like you go with it can i also say like as as like a on our friendship like i i like that i feel like we're kind of like in some t some ways like an accountability partners yeah. for like life in yeah. general and um i don't know it's just like i feel like i could come to you and, and tell you about certain things like that i can't really tell other people within our community you know and like you understand it and you hear it you, like you can see it and it feels good you know so i appreciate that thank you i feel the same way and it's like i think it's always important to surround yourself who's with people who understand your reality and live in the same reality yeah for sure because i think it's it's think good it to do so both suffocating if, yeah if you're not it's very draining because i've lived in worlds where i'm just like oh we're not in the same reality and i think it's important to like be able to exist mm -hmm. but it's exhausting so yeah they've been staring at my feet the whole time <laughs> free feet okay uh, thank you wow Goodbye. that was two hours that was so fun though yeah that was a great update <laughs>